Hey everybody, it's Timothy Karambat, founder of Ramp, and uh, today I'm going to be making some tutorials essentially on how to get started with Ramp, starting from the very beginning. So I get a lot of questions about how do I generate my art? How do I get my metadata? Well, when it comes to a generative collection, and a generative collection would be something that you're already familiar with. So something like, uh, you know, Board Ape, right? Uh, if we go look at Board Ape Yacht Club, you'll see that, you know, there are these, uh, these things called traits, right? Like background, earrings, eyes. And when I say generative, this basically means this collection has 10,000 items. And really what's happening here is a combination of different layers, right? That then form together to make one cohesive image. So the good news is that you don't have to make 10,000 images. You can actually let a computer do it, and all you have to do is draw your layers. So we're going to start with that. So we're not even going to touch ramp in this video. We're actually just going to make the art. So to make the art, there is a popular open source tool named Hashlips. Now to use Hashlips, you have to have a little bit of some uh, you know, tooling, essentially, cre already created. Uh, so you're going to need something called NPM or Yarn. Um, you can install easy, uh, like both of these very easily on Mac OS with a tool called Brew. Um, that will not be covered in this video, so I'm going to assume that you already have Yarn or NPM installed. And the next thing you're going to want to do is open up a terminal and go to your desktop. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to clone this whole repository because this is a tool and essentially each project is kind of like a new instance of this tool. So we're just going to clone it to the desktop. And there we go, that's open. And we're going to CD into the Hashlips art engine. And then I'm going to open up a VS Code terminal that we'll be kind of working with here. Now, before I get into this, let me show you the art. So a friend of mine has sent me their art that they use just for testing purposes. Uh, I'm not going to be deploying this to mainnet, but it is just for just to show you guys how uh, you should structure your art before you even touch hash lips. So you'll see that we have a couple folders here, background, base, body, eyes, head, and mouth. Let's jump into background. So you'll see background are just some simple colors. And you'll notice that there is a uh, a pound sign and then a number like 14.285.jpg. So in my project, I want every single background to have the same probability of appearing in my collection. So none of these are rare. They're all equally probable. And so 100 divided by however many there are in here, 7 is 14.285. If we go to bases, there are five bases, so each one has a 20% probability. And you'll see that these are just some very basic bases that they had drawn up that they're using for their test project. <clears throat> I have already assigned the number, the weight number to all of these. But if you wanted a trait to appear more often, you would just change these numbers and then just make sure that the probabilities all add up to 100. But that's all that you need to do in order to get started. So if we go and explore the, the code that comes with this package, you'll see that there's a readme here um, that allows you to you know understand more of the features that are available to you. But we're not going to get too far into this. There are two folders that we really want to focus on. The first is layers, which you'll notice they pre-populate with. So you, here we go. We have a 40, 40, 20 percent on these uh, PNGs that they've given us. Uh, these come default with the package. We're going to be deleting all of them. And then there are there's really just one major file called config.js. Config.js is where you're going to be doing everything you need to do to control this project. Like what does the uh, uh, symbol look like? What is the external URL? Maybe even adding custom uh, parameters that will go into your metadata. And what is metadata? We'll show you, but at the end of the day, it's how NFTs actually work. So this metadata contain URLs that point to where your image is actually stored. And that's how places like OpenSea 
find them. So that's called the base URI. We'll be changing that later. And there's actually a tool to do that directly from the command line very easily. But we also won't be messing with Solana today. We're working with Ethereum, Polygon, uh, Arbitrium, Optimism, like anything that has to do with ETH, we're making metadata for that blockchain. Uh, they are all pretty congruent. So the first thing that we'll see in these parameters, this is the most important part of this code. It's called the layer configurator, and it basically is saying grow addition to how many. So this is going to make tokens one through five. And here is the order in which they should be put. Think of this order as like stacking a sandwich, right? Background is going to be the very first layer because everything gets put on top of that. Then you have your base, then you would have your eyeballs, and then everything else kind of just gets combination uh, placed on top of each other until you wind up with this image sandwich that we then compress and save as a single image and we record all the metadata for that. And that's how we get our images and metadata. So in order to get started with this before my laptop seems to take off into space because it seems like it's about to, we're gonna jump into the layers folder, just delete everything, copy this, paste it in here. And depending on how many images you have, that could take some time. But uh, I'm gonna assume that you only have a light project. Uh, let's make a 8,888 collection, yeah? Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is open up the source code again. Uh, just to have the documentation up. So you'll notice this is where people always ask questions of, well, I have a separate set of folders that are all my rares, right? And that's pretty common. But in total, like let's say we have, like for example, they, have, they generate 50 and then they generate another additional 100. That means that the addition grew to, the, like the entire collection grew to size 150. So it's not how many do you wanna add, it's how many are now in the collection every time you add one of these new attributes? And you'll see that they added a new layer here called alien headwear in their example. And basically this is how you would com uh, combine rares. Now, there is one important detail that they do kind of bre breeze over, which is, let me find it. Ba -ba -ba. I think it is, layering order shuffle layer configurations so in this example it would make 50 let's say common nfts then you would make 100 rare nfts or vice versa 50 rares and 100 commons in order so that means that all 50 tokens one through 50 in the very beginning are going to be all your rares you really never want to do that so what you want to do is you actually would want to turn shuffle layer configurations to true and now it will just randomly pick, okay, we're gonna make one from here and then we're gonna make one from here and then we're gonna make one from here and it'll keep doing that until the additions are completely set with the same probabilities and sizes that you specifically wanted. So you can see this program is very, very powerful. Um, the, j just some other like things to know before you get started. The name here should match. So background should match a folder called background. And the way that your traits will wind up being shown is it will have a class of background and then a value of whatever the name of your file is before the pound sign. So we're gonna have a trait called background with a value of blue 14.285% of the time. And same with base and body. So if you wanna have funny and unique names, name your file something funny and unique because otherwise you're just gonna get very bland colors. So let's set up and get our stuff done. So first thing we're gonna have is our background. Then we're gonna have our base, and then we're gonna have our body, which these are case sensitive. And then we wanna have eyes, and let's do head. And we'll just see how these combine, and mouth. And that's all of our layers right there, that's all of them. Uh, we want to make a 8,888 collection straight from the bat. Like, that's what we want to do. What are we going to call this collection? We're going to call this Lazy Ramp Apes. And what's the description? It's going to be a tutorial. I should probably not commit a typo directly to the blockchain um, eventually. A tutorial for generating a... 8,000, 8.8, .8, let's do 8.8,000 uh, NFT project with, 
I mean, some code. We're gonna say some code because the fact that we're doing this right now is a little bit of programming. Um, this is not within ramp soon. Maybe you'll be able to do this within ramp. I can't speak too much on that. Uh, you won't even have to even use hash lips anymore, actually. Um, some other things that we're gonna be using. Uh, so format, 512 by 512. This is in pixels. What does this mean to you? Uh, it's basically the size of your image, and you have to consider, though, when you upload to a site like IPFS, you often pay for the storage that you use. So if you have these massive HD images, 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1920, you're going you're gonna to have an awfully big file. There's really nothing that you can do about that. There is some compression that occurs on Hashlips, but it is not enough to you know, save you an immense amount of space. Uh, your output will always be a PNG also. Uh, that is worth saying. Um, so now that we have our very basic metadata set up, uh, let's just say there is uh, some extra metadata we want to add. This is all extra stuff that's going to get added into our system. So let's say we have a website, right? And we're just going to, I'm going to direct it to, uh, you know, ramp.xyz. But your website could be just where your project is hosted. Uh, so this can be really anything you want. Um, you could have it to where, you know, like let's say you're running like a game or something. You could have it to where this has like some unique ID for your game. So you know that your metadata is your metadata. Um, either way, there's a thousand ways to do this. But the best thing we can do now is just, you know, uh, get going. So when we got to the project, like it has dependencies, things that let it run. So we're just going to do... Uh, we're just going to run the command yarn. And what this is going to do is install a bunch of packages, apparently very quickly. Uh, and this will give us the ability to fully use this tool. So how do we start building our layers? Well, we just do yarn build, I believe. And you'll see that the script is now running. And if we go to the build folder, you'll see we now have two things. And you'll see, oh, wow, look at that. We're starting to get images. We're starting to get images. Let's just see what one of these look like. Look at that, like we have an image. And then uh, even, even more impressively, if we go to its JSON file, we have all of our metadata. It's right here. And look, the attributes are already figured out. That's how simple it was. Oh, I don't quite like this Hashlips art engine. You can actually change that. I'll show you how. Uh, we're gonna keep it though, just because I do really much, I do very much appreciate the Hashlips uh, project and I think that shouting them out for their hard work is 100% something that you should do. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, like we have all of our attributes, but you'll notice that the image, right, is some IPFS URL that's not valid, right? There should be like some kind of token here. We're going to fix that later with ramp. And there's actually an easier way to even do it through hash lips, but it requires a little bit of technical know-how. So we're not going to get into that in this series, but we are going to show you uh, how to, like, basically what to do with all of these JSON files that you have. Um, so basically, we're at, you know, 300 right now. Um, and yeah, we're going to wait till all 8,000 are generated. And then I'll start back up the video and we'll go from there. All right. And as you can see, we're back and we have created the final edition, uh, 8,888, as we were talking about. And we just did one single call to make every single one of them. And if we go to images, we have a lot of images and if we go to JSON we have an equal amount of JSON and there is a lot of it but what are you gonna do with this well that is actually going to be when we are gonna go to ramp but I wanted to just show you exactly what this process looks like for generating art and metadata now you don't want to delete this folder uh, or a, or like if you rerun this script, it's going to overwrite what's currently in images and JSON. Um, there are some tools for it. Let's say you want to update just a description because you made a typo or something like that. You can do that without having to run the, uh, the regenerator. Um, I believe it is in the readme and there should be something to, I think it's like update. It's like yarn update or something like that. Uh, ye update info yarn run or yarn update info will update the info with whatever if you have to make a change here but you don't want to regenerate all of your images you can do that um the next thing that i just wanted to show was actually this is a very useful tool uh so you would come here and you would run yarn rarity and this is actually going to give you the uh statistics uh in percentages and quant quantitatively uh what 
attributes have what kind of occurrence. And so you'll see that because it's not a perfectly random system, even though we assigned the same weight to everything, uh, we have, and also because we're not doing a completely round collection, you'll see that we have 10.10, 10%, 9.78. It's not a guaranteed system, which is why if you're going to do one-offs, you should do those in their own folders and make sure that they appear with a rarity weight of like one, which basically means 100%. So when you're generating one of ones, you wanna be careful of that, but this will actually give you the trait and the weight and the occurrence of everything, like just, just the way that we planned it. Um, but now in the next video, we're actually gonna take this art and put it on Pinata and work with Ramp to get our fully complete metadata so that we can go and launch our contract on the testnet. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.